<laughs> so, hey, let's get into it. Yeah, yeah. Good to yeah, talk sure. to you. Um, just yeah. before we get uh, on to the new release, let's just yep. um, go back to your last album. That was a magnificent album. Did you get much of a chance to tour that at all, or did everything just shut down? Uh, well, first of all, thank you. Uh, I think uh, we were pretty pleased with the album ourselves as well. But, uh, yeah, we, we did manage to start the tour, but then it, it kind of um, ended in the middle somehow. I mean, we played in uh, in Europe, and then we did a, a North American stint as well. And then, uh, you know, we had the Christmas break and then just managed to finish a tour here, here in Finland. And then, then everything was shut down. So so it was like, uh, I don't know how many shows, 50, 60 shows, something like that. But uh, but definitely not, 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 yeah, definitely not as much as we used to. No, you did um, uh, better than a lot of uh, bands can uh, lay claim to. So, yeah, good on you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, some bands, yeah, some bands didn't even go out, you know. They just released an album and, yeah. When did the idea form? for this acoustic adventures and how did you go about um putting it down well it was something that had been brewing uh we did uh did uh, uh, some shows in 2016 acoustically and then in 2019 we did a tour and and then of course fans kept asking you know when are you doing an album and um so so, so and we thought about it also like we had so much fun so we realized we have to do it at some point and uh I actually had already talked with the label about this, and we had a have, had a deal set up, and we were supposed to go to LA to my friend's studio and record the album uh, in the beginning of this year. But then everything happened, so so uh, we didn't have any shows. So so we we recorded this last year, then um, here in Finland, of course, because we couldn't travel. Mm. Uh, but but everything so so it was I mean it was uh, pre-planned, and uh, we just have moved it up a little bit because we didn't have anything else to do basically <laughs> and then uh, the plan we we went out on a limb because we we, um, we wanted to record it live and we also didn't use a click track so so it was just the four of us playing together in a room and and it was uh, quite challenging to try to make it work uh, like that and then Tony did his vocals afterwards but but yeah so it was uh, we wanted it to to, to sound Mm, as good as possible, but maintain the feeling that that you're sitting down with us in mm. the living room, for example, mm. and we're playing for you like right there. So, so it was it was a bit uh, tricky to to achieve that balance. What were you doing for equipment, keyboard wise, um, with uh, this recording? What were you playing? Uh, well, I used the upright piano in the studio, and then uh, I had a. Uh, Korg SV1, uh, which I used for for electric piano, and then the Hammond organ from from the studio, and then I did um, I used a couple of synthesizer sounds, uh, but we, I, I tried to keep it at the minimum uh, and and only used it when I really felt I had to, and so uh, we we wanted to to not put layers and layers of keyboards in there, mm. and also also to to use the classic kind of keyboard sounds like not any anything too modern so to speak so i would say like uh any of the keyboard sounds that you hear on the album you can you could make on keyboards from the 70s you know and there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> no no it's just you know uh we thought a lot a lot about it and and uh and you know uh, i wanted to, to to have some kind of logic into it so it's it's basically just a bunch of old stuff mm. <laughs> so to speak I've only had the chance to listen to it once. Um, it does sound very warm. Back when they, probably the late 90s, when MTV was doing this unplugged thing and every band, every man and his dog was doing a unplugged set, they just sounded yeah. almost slapped together stuff and pretty cold and lifeless, yeah. whereas this is a lot more, um, like I said, warm and... It does sound like what you said you were aiming for to make it sound like you were sitting in the room with the band playing. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy it sounds that way because that's that's what we try to do. But uh, yeah, I think uh, like for example, the first time we played uh, acoustic shows in in 2016, like we had had done like a few songs here and there before, 
but uh, that was the first time we, we played full shows only acoustically and and then it was more of this like you said slap together kind of thing and uh, then when we went on the next tour we decided that we have to to make it better and actually figure out some some things about the arrangement and not just you know take the song and play it through and say okay that's how it goes you know mm. and 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 those arrangements were the basis for these albums uh, so 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 i mean we we did uh spend a lot of time trying to work out the, the arrangement to make sure it's just not you know playing playing the same songs the same way but with different sounds yeah Tell us about the the choice of songs here, and I want to ask you, this is labelled Acoustic Adventures Volume 1, so that yeah. tells me there's going to be a Volume 2, so what made you choose what you have on Volume 1, and what have we got in store, or haven't you even sp- talked about Volume 2 yet? Well, well first of all, we did... Uh, uh, follow our original plan which was to record two albums at the same time and, and so we recorded about 25 songs right. at the sessions yeah and um then after we got to to do that then then the selection uh, part was it was really tricky but uh, our aim was to have one song from each album on both of the volumes yeah and so we toyed around with ideas and switched and changed and uh, and then it just ended up some way or somehow and then then when we got to the point that okay now we have songs from bo- all the albums on both volumes then we were done. Yeah. So it was uh, it was maybe a bit tricky but also it was very random, <laughs> you know. So we tried to to be philosophical about it, and, but, but the guiding line was just to take one song of each album, and so that uh, narrowed it down a little bit and, and and made it easier to do the selection. But but it was it was tricky, and I don't know if if this is the best song order, and and compared to volume two, you know, should it have been different or something? But this is now how it is, and and I think we live with it. Did any of the songs on there basically pick themselves? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I would say so. Songs like Full Moon, I Have a Right, Talula, stuff like that. Uh, and then, of course, because now we had, usually when you record an album, uh, it's new music, you haven't played it live, so you don't really know what's going to work and not, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and stuff like that. And, and, and with these albums... Uh, first of all, the songs were familiar from being recorded before, and then we had the, the advantage of having toured with this music. Yeah, so yeah. Th- it was really easy to, to pick, I think maybe 10, 15 songs, something like that, are, are songs that we have already played live. So it mm, was really yeah. easy to say, okay, this one works live, let's do it. And the arrangements were pretty much worked out as well. So that was the starting point. And then after that, we tried to find some uh, more odd songs, you know. Uh, when's, when's the album coming out? Give us a bit of a rundown to um, release date. In January. Was it maybe the 14th or something? Or or later, maybe 20-something? I, no, I don't have the info right here. So I've since found it, 21st. Yeah, okay, you have it. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, 21st, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's going to be – there's going to be a second single um, and a video – uh, before that and that that would be around the 14 15 something like that and uh, uh we're going to shoot the video uh in a week or so here in finland it's going to be really interesting because it's uh winter time there's a lot of snow and it's cold so uh, and and i already have a, have a flu right now so let's see how, how, how much worse it can get but but yeah i mean um yeah that we are really happy about the albums and, and also like we did them already last year. So it's been nerve wracking to wait and, 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 you know, we think we did something good, but nobody else had heard it. So now it just, you know, the waiting part is really horrible because you don't know if, you know, if people are going to share your uh, vision or understand or, or like, like the stuff. So, so I'm really happy that finally we get to, to release the, the album, at least the first one. I think you'll do okay. Thank you. What's the funniest memory you've got with something that's happened uh, in music? Now, it could be on the tour bus, could be on stage, could be at rehearsal, recording. Any funny stories spring to mind? 
there are many. And of course, when you get asked this, it's always a blank. But uh, I got to make uh, Matt Sorum from Guns N' Roses, or who used to be in Guns N' Roses. I got to make him a drink once when we were in Japan. And uh, I don't know if, if it's funny or not, but it was really surreal, at least. Uh, we were in uh, in Tokyo in uh, in a bar called uh, Lexington Queen and partying with the boys. And it was like maybe 15 years ago or something like that. And uh, I saw Matt Sorum walk in the door. So I just instinctively, I, I don't know why, but I just jumped up and said, hey, Matt Sorum. And, and he goes like, he looks at us and goes like, yeah. And I'm like, come here and get a drink. And he did. So he came over to the, we were at the VIP section and um, at that section they don't, uh, well, they do serve drinks if you want, but also like what we had was just like mixers and alcohol and stuff so we could make our own. Yeah. So I just made him a screwdriver and he's like, oh, okay, all right, what's going on? And he was out with the Velvet Revolver at that time. Yeah. And so we chatted oh. for a bit. He went off, yeah, he went off to the bathroom. Then he came back and just said, you know, he was there with some girl, maybe his wife, girlfriend, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, so then they left yeah so he had the drink went to the loo came back and said all right cool guys and then he left <laughs> so that's uh, and then ne- the next day you go like did Matt Serum actually have a drink with us and like, yeah and why and, and then you go like oh right you know because that's the stuff that when you grow up and you watch like a Guns N' Roses video or something and, yeah. and then you see these guys in, in real life and, and meet them and, and uh, yeah so that was uh, a bit mind blowing, or one of the mi- million things that has happened. But but at least that was something something different. Hey, thanks so much for talking to me. Best of luck with your uh, new album, Acoustic Adventures Volume One, due out January twenty second. We'll keep an eye out for a new film clip in the week before. Thanks so much for chatting with me, and best of luck with it all. Thank you very much. It was a nice chat.